how do you write in alignment with your human design? Hey guys, I'm Rachel, your host of the BU Bay podcast. Before we dive into this topic of writing in alignment, I want to make a quick announcement that I have two one-on-one spaces left for the end of the year. And we all know that messaging is the foundation of a successful business, right? We know it's a skill that we need to learn, right? And if you're struggling to articulate what you do, which means you're not attracting the right people, your launches are kind of flopping, and you don't know what to write on social media, (laughs) girl, (laughs) we gotta talk. Uh, Because this is a foundational skill that i want every entrepreneur to have and that's what we're doing inside one-to-one we're creating offers that freaking speaks to the soul of your ideal client we're creating a message that feels like an extension of you and allows you to go out and talk know how to talk about what you do create offers that are selling and launching launching doesn't feel like this thing oh my gosh i've talked to like four people lately that have said they want to give up on launching and go evergreen because launching feels so hard. And I relate to that so much. I have felt the same way. And I want to say it's almost never the offer that's wrong. It's how you've positioned it and the messaging that you have. That's why launching feels hard. And I want to fix that for you. So if you are the self-led, ready to go, committed to your success and done scrambling trying to understand how to articulate what you do please please reach out because one to one is going to rock your world and change everything so that's my freaking outfit okay so let's get into how do we write in alignment with our human design first of all how do we know we're not in alignment with our human design how do we know our messaging is a flop and not working right We're finding it difficult to attract ideal clients. That's number one. And this can look like um, freebie seekers. You get a lot of people in your audience that buy or get all the freebies and ask all the questions in your DMs, but they never quite buy, right? You're not attracting those higher quality leads, the people that are willing to pay you one-on-one. Again, not everyone is, not everyone in my world, they some stay at the lower ticket price because they're newbies and that's okay, right? But are you getting the people that are willing to spend money, that are up here ready to go and excited to pay you? That's not happening. There's something going on in your messaging. If your launches are lackluster, if you're, right, (laughs) you want to go evergreen because you think it'll be easier. I guarantee you it won't. You still have to show up and sell. You still have to, you still have to sell your stuff. Evergreen or launch, it doesn't really matter, right? You still have to sell. You don't know how to talk or how to talk about what you do, but it's also social media feels really hard. They kind of go hand in hand. You don't know how to talk about what you do. So therefore you don't know what to post. And so your Instagram feed ends up being kind of all over the place. No one really knows what you offer and it feels a little bit, all over the place, right? That's how you know that your messaging is misaligned. When you get into this position, it's 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 okay because honestly, this is where I would say 90% of entrepreneurs are at some point in their journey. They end up in this position of I don't actually know how to talk about what I do and I need to learn a skill. And messaging and that's okay we all have to learn it okay what most people do though when they get into this position of like i know my messaging is off i know that i'm not articulating what i do well um they end up looking at what other people are doing and that looks like looking at the coaches that they really admire or the people on social media and going what are they posting what are they writing on their sales pages how are they writing their emails and you try to emulate it except Learning times out of 10, they're completely different energy, completely different uh, goals and vision and mission behind their messaging. And it's not going to work for you. We can look to other people and learn from them, but we can't take that as like, this is how I should do it, right? You end up trying to rebrand yourself, whether that be in the visuals, whether that be in changing your offer again, again. 
like I said in the beginning, not the offer that's the problem. It's like like the positioning and the messaging behind it. But if it's not selling, you're like, okay, I guess this isn't what people wanted, right? And you throw it up, right? Or you try to rebrand your whole aesthetic and colors and logo. And not to say that you can't rebrand because I'm in the middle of a rebrand right now and changing how I want to show up. But rebranding shouldn't happen every few months. It should be something that's like every one to two. I'd say one at the minimum um, and like two or three years at that maximum point because you grow and you learn and you expand, right? So sometimes your messaging tweaks and your branding changes and you because you are a new person. You're showing up in a different way and you want that to be reflected in your branding. That's how I feel. I know that my branding is not representing me anymore and it feels like I need to rebrand. I'm not doing it. Because it didn't feel like that brand wasn't growing. It was growing. It is growing. It's just I want it to be this next level version of myself. Does that make sense? Right. Or the other piece you try to do when your messaging is misaligned is poll your audience. Now, I get this because as many Jen and Jens do this too, is they poll their audience. I even see all types doing this. They pull their audience of like, what do you want to see from me? Or what do you want me to offer? And that is the worst place to be. We want to know what our audience wants, but we want to use discernment when we're looking at those results, right? Because if we're going, we don't want to offer something just because someone said, hey, would you do this? You need to run it through your own filter of discernment and authority and be like, do I have excitement? Do I want to say yes to that? If you don't, it's going to flop. They like, I've heard this time and time again from clients that they'll get people asking them to offer a class or um, some an offer of some kind from them. Like, will you do this? They put the yeah, they put together the offer and then no one buys it. And I always ask them, did you actually want to offer that? Did you actually feel excited about it? I'll be like, really? I just thought it would sell. Anytime that you say, I think this will sell, that is the not the place that you want to be in. <laughs> that is not what you want to be creating offers from. You want to be creating offers from excitement and how you want to serve and what really feels good and exciting to do, right? Then positioning it in a way that your ideal clients go, yes, that's for me, right? Not the other way around. We don't want our ideal clients telling us what to offer. This is, I think, leftover from old school marketing where you look at the, the marketplace and it, you poll the people and ask them what they want and then you give them what they want. Most people don't know what they want. Clearly, most people don't know what they want. So again, passion and excitement and how you want to serve first and foremost. Okay, so we know that this is what we're doing when things are misaligned. But how do we actually get them to be aligned? What are ways that we can get our messaging back on track in a way that feels really good to us, right? Okay, I wanted to give you three ways that we can kind of get things back on track and into that alignment down in this episode as well, because I think it's important to know what's going wrong, what we think we are doing to fix it, and what actually will fix it, right? So first and foremost, obviously, we're looking at our human design. We're looking at our type. We're looking at our throat center. We're looking at mercury. Those are like the big three that I'm looking at. But we can look at other deeper elements as well, depending on how far down the rat hole of human design you want to go. Could be sun, could be incarnation cross, uh, north nodes, uh, defined, undefined centers. So much information in that chart. The big trees are the most important when we're creating and crafting your magnetic message because this is what's going to feel the most natural and it's going to be easier to show up, create the video, create the content, do the reels when you understand how your energy is working truly and that way you're not going against it. That's why it feels so freaking hard is because you're working against your own ener energy and the way that it wants to be expressed. So it's understanding how that is working within you. The second one is defining a specific 
problem. This is one I see so much. And honestly, I've fell into the trap too. Like, I want to give you all the things. I want to give you all the things to solve the problem. And then you end up creating giant offers that have a vague transformation, something on the other end that's like, well, it could be this or it could be that. And I hear that all the time. My clients always have different outcomes every session. It's not true. There are through lines. And if you get super specific on what problem, excuse me, you're solving, you will have a more specific transformation. You will. It's inevitable. So we have to understand what is this specific problem that we're solving. Other thing that this does when we understand what specific problem we're solving, it starts to create an offer stack, an offer ladder, right? In an offer ladder, we want people to come into our world and digest either the free or low ticket content, right? That helps with a specific problem. And then we lead them to a mid tier offer. And then we lead them to a higher tier offer. That's how we create demand for our offers and make it so much easier to sell the mid and the high tier is because there's already people in our audience that love us that are like consuming. And if you're doing low ticket, they're, they have skin in the game. They have money in the game, right? They're avid listeners of you. They want to move through, right? And so cre- understanding what specific problem are you solving at this, uh, at this lower end that brings people in that then lines up with your one-to-one at the other end or mastermind or whatever's at the other end. And here are some of the examples. Okay, so if you are a content marketing coach, a specific like lower problem is maybe making really great reels. Maybe you're awesome at making reels and you can have an offer that shows them how to do that for themselves and make it fun while they do it. That leads into a group program that's maybe how to create better content or um, something like that. And it leads to one-on-one, right? I am such a huge proponent. This is the way I've started to structure my business in the last year. And it has been life-changing, life-changing, guys. No more selling just one-to-one. I'm focused on building an offer ladder and stacking things so that it's not just one-to-one. I feel like when we only, maybe this is a many many gen in me, but I think when we only focus on one serving one-to-one and one offer, one capacity, we can get really stuck on it. Almost like we have to chase. You're always worried about filling that spot and finding the next client for it, right? Versus if you have this offer stack of things and people coming in at the lower ticket things and your audience growing, momentum is growing, which is huge, right? We have to gain momentum. And then all those people are buyers to sell to in your mid and your high tier, right? It becomes so much easier because they are already invested in you. Okay, I get super sidetracked. Okay, another one. If you are a health coach and you help people really um, create like um, getting their health back on track, right? Maybe in the dieting realm. How can you create them a meal plan or something like that to help them keep on track when there's Halloween candy all around them (laughs) or when they're super exhausted from a long day at work and don't want to cook anymore? How can you support them in a specific offer, a specific problem that they are facing? Great. Solve that. Um, or if you're a relationship coach and you want to help them like heal their trauma and um, cre- you know attract the right relationship, what about the specific problem of just helping you create the bio that's going to attract the right guys on a dating app, right? I don't, I've never dated on a dating app, but I got to believe that there's a way to write a bio that attracts the right people and you're not getting like weirdos and going on weirdo dates, right? That's a specific problem that would lead to them at the other end or helping them heal their trauma, blah, blah, blah. When we lead with the healing the trauma, when we lead with this more esoteric stuff up here, our clients kind of don't get it. They glaze over, which leads into my third and final um, 
way to get your messaging in alignment. This is understanding your ideal client's awareness of the problem, their level of awareness. Do they realize they have a problem? What do they think is the problem? How do they talk about the problem? And then what do they think is the solution? Understanding where your client is at in that awareness spectrum allows you to bridge the gap. And you know it's so much deeper. You know that it's because they haven't healed. Like if it's a relationship coach I'm talking about, you know that the reason that they're not attracting the right person is because they have unhealed patterns and da da da. But if she doesn't know that yet, or if she's not ready to really heal, and this is this is what I really want my spiritual people to think to like hear, is that if they're not ready or don't have the like deep awareness that their life is going to be so much better when they heal this, you can't speak to them. You're not going to get through. You have to bridge the gap of why healing is the thing that's going to be the best thing for them, right? How it's going to help them with this problem. This And generally, the problem is very 3D for my spiritual folks. It's very 3D. Like they are getting the worst guys on Tinder. Or Tinder. Is that the one... Tinder is the like hookup one. Again, I'm so t- I'm so bad. Um, but they're attracting the wrong people on a date, right? That's their problem. But they don't realize that it's something so much deeper. How can you help them now with this specific problem? And then as they're in your world, start to uh, bridge the gap and show, hey, it's because of this, right? Kind of what I did with this episode in that I'm showing you why or how to know if something is misaligned, what you're doing to try and fix it, and then what the actual fix is, right? That's bridging the okay? Those are the three things. So we're looking at our human design to understand how our energy works and we're not fighting it and facing even more resistance and confusion and frustration. And we're looking at solving a specific problem at each step of the way. And then we're understanding the level of awareness our ideal client really has so that we don't talk to them like in the deep and esoteric when they have no clue what you're talking about, right? You'll, it's going to be really tough to get them. Done. But you can still serve the people here, right? You can still serve them and bring them through a nurture sequence and really show them what the problem actually is totally possible but we have to think about it and understand it from their awareness that's what messaging is so i hope this was immensely helpful please uh like follow share comment do all those things i would love 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 hearing from you reading your reviews on the podcast i adore them and it makes my day it really truly does and same with comments on youtube i love love getting comments it makes me so excited um that is it my friends have a wonderful first is it the first week of november first full week of november i can't believe it's november already insane i had my halloween candy my hundred grand i would love to know like what your favorite halloween candy is too mine is a hundred grand anything caramel it's so good anyway little fun sunday all right guys have a great week